Hello YouTube, welcome back to an operating system review where today I'm going to be reviewing Perl Linux 5. There is a YouTuber who left me a comment to not install Perl Linux 5 because the installer kept crashing at the end. Well, I work reverse psychology, so of course I have to try it. I went on the website, yeah, we're gonna figure that out, but at least it worked for me. But yeah, let's get into the meat. Here it says, well, it was updated on New Year's anyways. Both Perl releases 4 and 5 should have no issues during the installation process. No username or password required. Please see the README file per release for any added information. Well, since it crashes at the very end of the installation, and it looks like, I don't know if he's tried it beforehand or after, but my guess is, whatever it is, it's a fatal flaw, and... You know, I've tried to install Perl 4 and, well, beforehand anyways, and it would crash, well, it would hang, basically, or not respond when I was, when I selected to uh, install the updates and the third party, or one or the other. So I just went straight up, no updates, no third party, because, well, I did have that experience, so, and luckily for me, it installed without a problem. I hope, I hope that was the problem for him. I hope so. If not, that's a big fatal flaw. And even still, it's a big fatal flaw. You're giving the options and your installer crashes with that? No, thank you. So anyways, if you manage to install Perl 5, this is Perl 5 in its vanilla state. So we're gonna go and look at the dock. So we have Plank, and we have Thuner File Manager, Finder, uh, the Terminal, Firefox, uh, Shotwell, uh, your webcam, document viewer, PDF, mic, really, my triple A, oh my god. <laughs> okay, so we're not even, we're not even a minute through and there's pornography involved. Oh, great. Rhythm box, which actually is a pretty good uh, music player. VLC, yeah, definitely not, you, not, not worthy of the quick time. I mean, VLC is much better than that. Cody Media Center, yeah. Uh, control Center, we have Show Desktop, what the fuck? No items in trash, which is trash. Text Editor and Firefox again, I mean there's two of them. So, you can't get enough Firefox, anyways. And this is a stock background, and as you can see from the bottom right, download from pickywallpapers.com. Yep. Yeah, I've seen that. So here we have this little dot, what the heck is that? Eh, it doesn't do much. So we have 84 recommended updates available, and for some reason, we have wireless? Okay. And what is this? Oh, that's the volume. Okay. So we've seen pretty much the taskbar and the dock. So now let's go see the menu. So there's still about my computer still lingering around. Accessories, we have pretty much all this. Gives me Image Writer, which I believe I've covered before, and I do like it very well. Um, we have an education. Oh no, fuck no. Not Bible time. Oh jeez. Enough with the religion crap. Games. Yeah, well, if you like Yahtzee and Solitaire, this distribution's for you. Gimp Image Editor, shot well again. Internet. Let's go see Internet. Come on, Ether Ape. Oh, this is a convincing icon. Yeah, basic, basic, basic. Pigeon Internet Messenger. Yeah, MSN is dead. I don't know about AOL Instant Messenger. Google Talk, Jabber, XMPP. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, LibreOffice, of course, out of the box. Uh, Audacity. Oh, it ships with Audacity. Cool. Local screen, which pretty much crashes all the time. Uh, Lingit is not a guitar only tuner sure let's open it uh... okay so when i speak in the microphone it see hold on a minute yep yeah okay when i speak in the microphone this is what happens it goes all over the place so i guess you're supposed to play a guitar and play with the tone and then get in the line but um... 
How am I supposed to align my voice? Hmm. Fuck this. System tools, well, we have all this again. Lots of terminals, lots of terminals, and file manager, and power statistics, and you log in, other ape, of course, decom, bleach bit, about my computer. Uh, what was other ape again? Oh. Oh, so it's a graphical network browser. <laughs> Let me see power statistics again. Uh, we're not really in an AC adapter. And the processors. Oh, there you go. So I guess this is all the processes that's been used. I guess. Ah, uh, places. Yada, yada, yada. System, preferences, hardware. And it goes on and on and on. On. Wait a minute. It's got Flash Player. Oh, great. Administration got the backup tools, users and groups, and everything you need. Software and update. And updates. Excuse me. Driver manager. Yep, it is technically Synaptic at the bottom. Of course, it's Ubuntu based. They didn't even bother getting their own archives. They're just using Ubuntu's repositories. <laughs> Uh, this device is not working. Yeah. Sure. So why do we need to use micro... Anyways. And of course, if you're not aware, this is running the Mate desktop environment. And if you're not aware what Mate is, well, it's a fork of GNOME 2. And I've seen that, and it just... Well, it just stays GNOME 2, and that's it. And they probably develop a few things here and there, but... That's pretty much it. It is GNOME 2. That's because a lot of people don't like GNOME 3, and I understand them. So of course, lock screen, log out, and shut down. Now, before we go ahead and do shut it down, I just want to check out uh, the graphical system monitor. See how much memory this one says it's using. 700 megs out of 2 gigs. So, uh, you could get away with it with a gig, a gig and a half. Now, Let's see what the terminal thinks about that. Okay, so HTOP is saying we're using 533 megs. So, yeah. I would say a gig, a gig and a half. So, yeah, that would be uh, recommended at least. Okay, so it looks when I click the something at the dock, it just disappears. Okay. Well, anyways, control center is this right here. Pretty much got the same shenanigan preferences, and yeah, if you don't like the menu, you just click on that and there you go. <laughs> okay, what was the point of having that in the menu? I don't get it. So let's see, what do we have as backgrounds? Oh my, we have quite the selection. Hmm, I like it. Ooh, and it automatically. Oh look at that! Now I have. Uh, Okay, looks like my windows are wobbly, so we have desktop composition, and look at that, wow. This is beautiful, and menacing at the same time. Mm. So anyways, theme-wise, we have all these. Your selection is basically your own selection. Oh, good grief, I can't wait to see that. Check this out. This is completely wrong. <laughs> the button's on the right, no, no, no. I mean, if you look at it, it even looks weird, and it's it looks much better here. I, it, uh, but the current theme suggests the font, so well, let's see if we can apply it. Oh, look at that. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. Oh, well. Oh, look, now I've messed everything up. Great. Uh, what is... Let's go check Plank. Oh. So that's Plank. Uh, oh, yes, 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 yes. These are the themes for your dock. Anyways, on primary display, you can turn it on or off, so you can have it on whatever display you want. You can have it in the center, you can fill it, or ha like have it like this. Not that bad looking, actually, if you ask me. You can have it at the start, at the end, or like I said, at the center, and then you can just go... Well, you can pretty much mesh, mess with it. Anyways. You can change the icon size, the behavior, the docklets. Ew, docklets. 
So anyways, this is Pearl 5. If you managed to install it, we've checked what it's got in store for us. We have even a guitar tuner, which is random, but whatever. And we've seen a couple themes in the background. So now, it's shown us what it's got. Now it's time to see how much it weighs on my scale. Okay, rating time. So as far out-of-box experience is concerned, um, it offers pretty much the same thing as Pearl 4. There's nothing extra except maybe the guitar tuner. I don't recall seeing that on Pearl 4, but I could be wrong. But we can't really play compare. We're going one by one. Out-of-box experience is a it's great. It's a great out-of-box experience. But I have to dock points because of the installer. So with that, out of box experience gets a seven. Look and feel, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, whatever. If it's up to you, it's up to you. Look and feel for me. I'd say eight. Not too bad. Not too rough. A little confusing for some who are very or used into a. KDE or Windows like environment may find that a little ugh. So, anyways, to each his own. Ease of use. Oh, yes. This is where things get a little nasty. It's not that because it is hard to use, not at all. It's easy to use. Problem is, once you get it installed, if, if yours fail and fail and fail and you get the download again and it fails and fails and fails, it's not easy to use, it's unusable. So yeah, because of that, it really takes a hit there. It's a three. Customizability, it's Debian. Do I really have to go far? You can modify, you can add, remove programs, blah, 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 and use your own, implement your own kernel, it's Linux, 10. And with that, the final score for Perl 5 is seven out of 10. Great operating system, if you manage to get it installed, this is what I really get stuck into that. It's just bleh. But it just goes to show that sometimes newer isn't always better. But if the installer would have worked properly, and it did happen with Pearl 4 installing updates and uh, uh, third party support for uh, like uh, music and everything where it just would freeze but it wouldn't fail. Um, if that issue would get fixed, the score would have been much higher. So if you got any questions, comments, anything you'd like to add, or a story you'd like to share about Pearl 5, post a comment down below. I encourage it. And with that said and done, stay bold and take care. Thanks for watching.